Okay, I'm covering 6.5, um, which is finding real roots of polynomial equations. I'm only covering a small part of it. Um, that's all that we're going to cover this year. Um, but it should be enough to give you some good foundation for next year. All right, so first thing we're going to do is solve polynomial equations by factoring. And then we're going to identify the multiplicity of roots. We're going to be doing that by graphing on our graphing calculators. All right, so we can find roots of polynomial equations by setting each factor equal to zero and solving for x. This is exactly what we did for quadratics. It's just with polynomials, we usually have more than two roots. So let's look at um, an example. And, and we practiced factoring last time, so we're going to be using some of those skills today. Solve the polynomial by factoring. So here's our equation. First thing I'm going to think of is GCF, and you can see, in fact, that I can factor out a 4x squared, or 4x to the 4, sorry, from each of these terms. So that's the first thing we do. So here's our 4x to the 4th, and when we factor that, we have x squared left from the first term, x from the second, and negative 6 from the third. This is just a quadratic, so we want to factor this quadratic, and we want multiples of negative 6 that add to be positive 1. And probably you've already thought of them. They're going to be x plus 3, x minus 2. Now we're going to set all of these factors equal to 0. Don't forget about the 4x to the 4th. That's also a factor. Set them equal to 0. Solve for x. That's going to give us x equals 0, x equals negative 3, and x equals 2 as our roots. So those, that, the final answer is roots are 0, negative 3, and 2. OK, another example. And it just is another type, another type of factoring, I guess. Um, so we have a lot of different ways to factor things. And we kind of have to use all of those things when we're factoring polynomials. Solve the polynomial by factoring. So here's our equation. First thing we want to do, just like in quadratics, is move everything over to the other side. So we're going to move the 26x squared over here to get this. And you might not notice it, but if this equation were x squared minus 26x plus 25 equals 0, we would know to start looking for factors of positive 25 that add to be negative 26. And we would see that x minus 25 times x minus 1 would work. And it's going to also work here. But instead of factoring it into x, we're going to factor it into x squared and x squared. So that's what was done first. Here's our two factors. We have x squared minus 25 and x squared minus 1. And we might remember, if you d don't remember, I'm going to remind you that difference of two squares is always a special type of factor. So whenever we have a squared minus b squared, that's always going to factor into a plus b, a minus b. And in fact, both of these are a difference of squares, because x squared obviously is a perfect square, 25 is a perfect square, and 1 is a perfect square. So x squared minus 25 factors into x minus 5, x plus 5. And x, minus, x squared minus 1 factors into x minus 1, x plus 1. Now we're going to set those all to 0 and solve. That gives us four different roots. Positive 5, negative 5, positive 1, negative 1. And that would be the answer. All right, here is your example. And you should try this. We'll go over it in class. We're going to move on to multiplicity. Multiplicity of a root, r, is the number of times that x minus r is a factor of p of x. So for instance, just in that last example, it's ugly. x squared minus 25 factors into x plus 5, x minus 5. So the multiplicity of positive 5 is 1, and the multiplicity of negative 5 is 1, because each of these is part of a factor one time for that polynomial. So when a real root touches, has an even multiplicity, the graph 
of the polynomial touches the x-axis but does not cross it. When the real root has an odd multiplicity, so that's for even, and that's things like 2, 4, 6, 8, an all odd mul multiplicity greater than 1, the graph bends, and I like to call the bend, I usually call the bend a squiggle. That's the technical name, not really, but that's what I call it. It looks more like a squiggle than a bend to me. So it bends as it crosses the x-axis. So what does that exactly mean? Well, let's look at this. This is a polynomial that's been graphed, and you can see that it, 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 cross, it touches or crosses the x-axis twice. Those are our roots. Right here, when x is negative 3, and here, when x is 0. So this is touching without crossing, so that means it's an even multiplicity. So it says here it's a multiplicity of 2. So the root negative 3, because that's the x value here, has a multiplicity of, neg of 2. x is 0 here, so the root 0 has a multiplicity of 3. So this is what I'm talking about when I'm talking about a squiggle. It kind of changes directions right there. Um, what does this mean exactly? It means that whatever polynomial this was, when it got factored, it had a root of negative 3 twice, so it means that part of the fact, when it was factoring, some, some of the factors were x plus 3 and x plus 3, because when we solve for x, that gives us, these both give us roots of negative 3. This says we had a root of uh, 3, of 0 three times, that means that it, we had x times x times x, it factored into x times x times x, or x cubed x cubed was one of the factors of that polynomial. All right, so let's look at an example of us trying to solve one of these problems. Identify the roots of each equation and state the multiplicity. So here's the equation. We're not going to try and factor this. Uh, some of these problems, the factoring gets pretty complicated. So we're going to put the equation into our graphing calculators, press the y equals button, plug this in. You might have to adjust the window a little bit, and then look at the picture. And what does this picture look like? Well, this is a squiggle, so that means we're going to have an odd multiplicity, or obviously since this is a cube, it's going to be 3. The multiplicity would be 3. Whoops. And what root is that? Well, if you can't exactly tell where this is, you can hit the trace button, and it tells you here that x is equal to negative 2, y is 0. So the root is equal to x equal negative 2, and the multiplicity is 3. Here's our next example, negative 2x cubed minus 12x squared plus 30x plus 200. Again, put that into the graphing calculator and graph it, and you can see we have a couple different points of intersection with the x-axis. This is this is where it touches but does not intersect. And I wasn't, well, it's pretty clear, I think. This 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can see this is at negative 5. So we have root is equal to negative 5, and it has a multiplicity of 2. This root here is 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have another root of x equal 4. It has a multiplicity of 1. All right. So you will do an example next. This is the one I would like you to try. So go ahead and graph it on your graphing calculators. Find the roots and the multiplicity of each of those roots. That wraps up the lesson. So this is your homework. Make sure you write down any questions, and I'll see you next time.